Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible strategy. strategy. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. Five familiar and fresh advocates. Certainly, five fresh and topical issues, so prepare to be challenged. Today, Saidu may seem a tad morbid, but it's all in a good course. He'll be preparing us for death. Uche isn't ready to go down without a fight. She'll be tackling our oppressive bank charges and enlisting crusaders in her course. Are you in? Paula Hon, a fresh face on the program, but a seasoned advocate nonetheless. He will be laying things bare and provoking us on a certain matter of independence. Ekene is all about getting us to own up to our crimes with her advocacy guilty as charged. I am certainly guilty of indulging a pet topic. We'll be talking governance and dysfunctionality. That's the size of the package. We're all set to unpack things for you after the break. Why do we act as though events that require planning and investment will happen by accident? So, I'm talking salary scandal. We can complain all we want. Nothing will change until we visit the subject of payments, conditions of service, and bonuses for political office holders, starting with the president. We continue to complain about massive kickbacks that inflate infrastructural project costs. These undocumented sums go to the same politicians whose conditions of service are way out of this world. So most of the damage stems from the actions of a small select group of citizens. The judiciary appears to be entrenched in this system of cash shares, so that if we took this matter to court, we would probably get nowhere. As I watch the Supreme Court of the UK hear the matter of the prorogation of Parliament by Boris Johnson, I was impressed with the proceedings in a manner that I wasn't when I watched the Nigerian Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. No one was in doubt that at this level, Buhari would be returned, even though he appears to have neither a certificate nor did he see it fit to file whatever he had when he applied for the job. So the sheer cost of state houses alone is scandalous, as so rock is way beyond what we require when there are Nigerians without a roof over their heads. The cost of cars for government will shock many. All this for chaps and ladies who govern a wretched nation. Still, we have to work within the law. If there are enough persons who feel prepared to move against the remuneration of politicians, I'm ready. I do not have the money, but can chip in. We must start there. If we need to go to an international court, let's go. It's one fight at a time. Yeah, nice one, Chuka. You know, I've been, I think we really must have this conversation. We have it in, in private, but for some reason, we never take it out there. I don't know why, as, you know, citizens of this country, we have not protested about this. We protest about uh, subsidy, all manner of things, but this we really ought to protest about. And secondly, I, you know, we need to look at why our politicians are, like, treated as full-time um, employees when most of the time they're not even around they're not they, they don't spend that much time in Parliament doing much else you know before you know it they'll soon go on recess and meanwhile they're collecting copious amounts of money um, I know a guy who well two actually that are in the House of Reps and you'll be a uh, I'll tell you what they earn because they've told me I'm just not going to release their names okay. but they take home at least 10 million naira every month. That's just 
the, then they have other bonuses and other things, housing allowance and clothing and you name it mm. on top of that. So ultimately, I'm pretty sure it probably amasses, comes close to about 20M. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is crazy. And these men, what do you do? They don't do very much else. So I think it's about time we go out there. Chooks, I'm with you. You know, let's, let's go out there. Let's yeah. protest about this because it's only when we, we do this, you know, that can something happen in America. They earn 174, a, sen a senator earns $174,000. Compare that to, with what somebody's earning over here. Yeah, actually, the figures I found, you know, yes. I was, I was, when I was looking up this topic, yes. I think the uh, president of America earns $450,000. Mm -hmm. yes. That's everything inclusive. Right. Yes. Everything. Whereas yes. our, our, our senators here earn 450 as their yes. padding. Pa pa yes. Yeah, it's yes. not yes. actually their main salary. Exactly. You know, the main salary is significantly less, less to, to yes. somehow how pull the wool over your mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. But the other surrounding costs, like you say, clothing and yes. so on, come to 450. Yeah. So you, we're competing with the, the president. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but I, I think um, we really need to look at this thing carefully. Um, what they're earning is a result of what the law allows them to yeah. earn. Yeah. Yeah. You know, separation of power, the legislative arm. Yes. They with uh, in conjunction with the revenue mm. uh, i think the yes. guys have fixed the salaries mm -hmm. you know so they they what they've done is not illegal they pay themselves so if we're going to change anything yes the uh, that's why he advocacy said has to not. come from them yes they need to sit down and yes. revisit Renumerations for yeah. themselves. Yeah, but Sani you know. from amongst them brought it up at least. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's not even the only one. That. Jibril, um, remember that, um, what's his name? The, the one that uh, he, he was a whistleblower. And when he mm -hmm. blew the whistle on. Um, well, that's the padding. Yeah. When he spoke oh, that's yes, when they were padding. Yeah, and he blew the whistle on that. And what did they do? They suspended him. They, yes. they, they did all manner exactly. of things. You know, exactly. I don't, it's not, the change isn't going to come from them. Yeah. We have to put pressure on them of course. to force that change. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Right. Mm. Don't uh, forget, these are people that have invested heavily to get there. So that's right. another wait, area wait, wait, we, need no, to we, we need to be that, 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 that is But, but Seydou, it, politicians because make losses, if, if that is if, in if business want, terms. If you, if you don't want to pay them that much, then yes. you make the system of entry Easy, exactly. by rare, without making it so expensive. Mm -hmm. You buy forms, five million naira. Imagine. You have to campaign around all the countries. You'd invest so much. Definitely, they want to recover their money. So if we need to address this thing carefully, we need to go back to the entry yes. uh, requirements. Make sure that these things are public. I, I, public. Sorry, I just want I, to. I, 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 I right. think no, I do agree. Looking with at you. it from an investment perspective, right. it's not the right way. It's meant to exactly. be a service, exactly. a public service, not an investment. Exactly. exactly. Then legality will not address it. It's a morality mm. issue now. Um, when I live in a country with this level of poverty, how do I feel mm -hmm. going on with the sizes of those salaries that we're mm -hmm. talking about? Mm -hmm. Don't also forget that this is a borrowed. Uh, uh, system of government. Right. And that's why it was really apt to go back to the United States and, and look at what the president earns. Mm -hmm. that, apart from the fact that the president of the United States pays for meals. Yes. Right. So right. it's not unlike here where you have a whole budget for mm. this and budget, budget for this, yeah. budget for that. Yeah. The, and the furniture, can you imagine? It's, it's, it's unimaginable. If you're, if you're around any of those politicians, honestly, um, the level of um, uh, the people around them, okay, their I, expenses I've heard this monthly, well. it's huge. Yeah, they're, they're running their own mini welfare their own cost, system. Mini welfare that's, system. That's why Dino Melaya is so popular it's, because it's, it's, he, he it's throws out their bags of rice. But it's still tokenism. Yes. What are you giving to these guys? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not making Does any it change their life? difference. It doesn't yeah. change it doesn't. their life. They still yes. remain poor, but you throw out some crumbs. Mm. Yeah. I really, I, I have to say, I, I sympathize with what yeah, you say to some extent. Let's be realistic. You know, these people, you're not going to return something. Yeah, but then I then understand where Chuka is coming from because you really have to say, look, this thing is not going to go away by following the normal means. They will not let go of this thing easily because look at in the middle of where we are now and they're still pushing for $50 million of jeeps for Imagine themselves. That. And even though, I'm sure if you said to them what happens to the jeeps of the last they four years, they'll laugh at you because yeah. they know that the previous senators They've have driven this. away with it. So <laughs> to me, we want the one that's coming to us. So something needs to change. But I, I do agree that we need to start protesting yes, about we it. Have to. They need to hear that we are revolted by this level of, do you say, greed yes. and insensitivity towards our plight. You can't be looking Why is it, though, that we don't... Because we hear about it, we talk about it, we even tweet about it, and then nothing... Nobody knows on the road. I mean, why, why? 
is it that we've reached that point, just like you said, you know, like um, you mentioned about how we knew what the outcome of the electoral uh, tribunal oh, was going to yeah. be. Before. Nobody even ever thought that Atiku was coming, <laughs> even though they tried to make us believe he was coming. No, it's uh, the truth. No, I mean, uh, you may. Yeah, okay, but let me, I, 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 <laughs> let me land. I, I, so I I'm just trying to say that is no, this, is this the same? Like, no, you please, yeah. you must come in. Mm. But what I'm trying to say is that is it the same reason why we don't protest against their salaries because we also know that they are the ones that Absolutely. will have to change the law. Are they going to want to change the law against That's themselves? Futile, uh, so is it a futile? Is it that we I feel just thought the revolution now for me I, I, included all those things. <laughs> yes. yes. So I, I'm taking I, it back to that. That was why I was happy to go out on the revolution now protest yes, yes, because I just okay. felt it was a whole gamut of, of everything that's going wrong. But I think say. this just takes us back to you know um, being very intentional. You know when we elect the people that represent us. If you want to have proper representation in the National Assembly, then make sure you put the right people there. People that would actually go there and change things. Make That's sure like we have influence. No, we do. Um, concerning this election we talked about, honestly, I, I've heard and I'm still reading about different. The outcome, right, is mm. it's a reflection of you know the, the case voting. they present yeah. the Those voting like yeah so now buhari is there the people have voted him in we like it or not he's going to be there for the next four years that's what exactly we how want. we felt yeah. yes and the election tribunal based on the evidence that was presented before it a decision was taken yeah. it's either he yeah, because i heard from a, a positive a clerk, and he seemed to be saying that they, Look, they, they, they didn't have a have strong case. Any different. It's, it's, the, the case yes. is just so difficult. We, we should not keep going round, you know, not be sentimental about these things. If the evidences are not there, I mean, that's it. Uh, well, I, 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 I think I would I will like to okay. leave us with something to think, think about along mm -hmm. that same line. Obama, as a senator from the state of Illinois, was still a lecturer at the same time. Mm -hmm. In fact, when he became a senator, he took up more hours lecturing and at the same time making laws. There was a particular month he presented 16 bills. There you go. I'll, I'll let it. I'll let <laughs> yeah. It. yeah. But <laughs> we pretty much said it. Um, a functional nation is not a random event. We have to invest in it. Saidu so is certainly factoring in planning and foresight in his advocacy after the break. It still happens. If, even if we don't plan for it. Are you prepared for your exit? Dalai Lama said, aging destroys youth, sickness destroys health, degeneration of life destroys all excellent qualities, and death destroys life. Even if you're a great runner, you cannot run away from death. You cannot stop death with your wealth, through your magic performances, or recitation of mantras, or even medicines. Therefore, it is wise to prepare for your death. Like it or not, we'll all die. But those who have made peace with life and who have made clear plans for death find the end of life may be transformed into powerful times unlike any other. Preparations prevent suffering and create opportunities for peace, closure, and even healings. Have you fulfilled your life's purpose? What legacy would you be leaving behind? Have you made peace with those you've wronged and those who wronged you? These and many more are questions we must constantly ask ourselves. Transition to afterlife doesn't have to be a taboo we should not talk about if we all leave prepared for our last days here on Mother Earth. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, the, the thing is, um, I think you kind of need um, to have some sort of belief in the afterlife for you to really be concerned about preparing for your death. Um, you know, I, I look at, I, when I look at a lot of these, the way our politicians behave, I really believe they think that this is the only life. This is, and this is the end. And so therefore we're gonna just grab every single thing we can grab. All of you people are thinking there's something better after this life, that's your own business. We're gonna, we're gonna take everything we can. So I think you need to believe in, you, you've gotta have that sort of belief in an afterlife or that there is something better and, and in order to attain it, then you have to prepare for it. Otherwise, most people are living, they're doing YOLO, you know, living for the moment. And, and that's, that's pretty much what it is, you know? And, and sometimes, even those of us that do believe in the afterlife, 
things can get to a point where you sort of <laughs> say to yourself, you know what, this afterlife, man, I, I don't have any real concrete <laughs> proof. Let me just chill out small. Let me yeah, just focus on what I can see, you know, because life can be so, it, it can just be coming at you at every corner and, and you just kind of think to yourself, you know what, it's too much stress to be preparing for this afterlife. Let me just prepare for today. Let me eat for today. And that's why you see a lot of people are prepared to do whatever it takes to just survive for today. So I think, yeah, there, there must be that belief in the afterlife to even motivate you to sort of plan or ahead like that. Is it possible that we're also in denial or we just don't, you know, it doesn't occur to us that death can come anytime? Yeah, the denial aspect is yeah, there. You yeah. know, it's there. Mm -hmm. Not because um, we don't believe there's an afterlife mm -hmm. or, or what we need probably Never is just that jolt. You know, just remember that all oh, could be to tomorrow. You. Yeah. It could yeah. be you next. Yeah, but they're you spending know? more time trying to live so they're not thinking about d dying per se, if you know what I mean. Like, like the man on the street who's trying to feed every day, he's not thinking about preparing for it. He's thinking about how I'm going to live. live. He's not thinking about die. how I'm yes. going to die. Well, I mean, I guess you in know? a way, the way I see it um, is that maybe the more realistic way is to prepare in a way that makes it part of your daily life. Mm. Because sometimes, you know, recently they're having a men's group, they're going to gather together and they want to talk about, you know, leaving your will for your family. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, someone said, oh, you're at 50, you're not too young to leave a will. And I said, what makes you think you couldn't have died at 40 exactly. or even 30? Mm -hmm. But if you, put a, uh, if you put a life pattern in place mm -hmm. where, you know, all your joint accounts with yourself and your wife, your, whoever it is that's nearest and dearest to you has access so that if you're not mm -hmm. there, you know, um, that person can access mm -hmm. the accounts. Then yeah. somehow that's part of that pattern. And if you build up your children in such a way, because I know a lady, I think uh, Libros did a, um, an advocacy on mm -hmm. her. You know, she died of cancer, but somehow she had been leaving letters for her children mm -hmm. all through that process. So they were able to read it back and it was almost like she was preparing them to be independent. Mm. You know, I think of Nigeria now, you have to right. Independence Day. You know, you need to build those you love around you to be independent of you. I've never been a fan of people who build people around them. Yeah, so if they're not there, nobody is indispensable. Mm. So always create a lifestyle where you can be indispensable. You can go away and things will still function because it's one thing them missing you, it's another thing them not being able to function without you. Mm. Um, so I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm in favor of all that. I think bring up your children in such a way that they are learning as they go along to be independent of you. Make sure if, you know, husband and wife, you, you have access to all the accounts. Don't wait till, mm. you know, he's away and then the, the, they start telling stories of the widow who's extended family. <laughs> We're dealing with you. Now, that will thing, the, you know, when I read that, I thought, yeah, the will, because a lot it is taboo a lot of Nigerians don't even want to hear about leaving a will because for them it's like I remember when my sister told my dad that he needs to consider you know doing up a will and he was like ah are you Planning thinking I'm me. getting ready to die and all of that you know <laughs> I, I, yeah that, that was you know but later on he it. understood when he had calmed down yes. and was less emotional he now understood why she was saying it you know um, most Nigerian families will not do that and on top of that we have so many crazy setups with how many wives and how many this and how I many I don't know these days are they not we don't have figures for it I, I'm, I'm for more those people who do not wills, right? considering but I think more do yeah, more will do now, now than before, yes, yes. but... I think be beyond the will, um, I also talked about legacy. How do you want to be remembered? Because yes. this, these are things that will jolt you to, yeah. you know, want to do something positive. Yeah. Would you be remembered by the number of houses you've yeah, built, yeah. accumulated, mm -hmm. or, the, or the wealth mm -hmm. you've, uh, you've acquired? Yeah. You know? So you probably want to be motivated to do <laughs> good. That's possible, though. You know? Yeah, well, I, I, oh, that I must, know, is that man that had yeah. that big house? Up to now, people talk about, talk about uh, yeah, positive, yeah, positive, 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 positive like, <laughs> Remember that? Yes, yes. Darosa. The famous um, pastor. Is, no. Not so somebody with a big house kind of thing. Yes. There was one man in Jebode like that. Oh. Uh, I can't remember, Kuna or somebody, where every time you pass through Jebode, they ask you, did you see his house on mm. your way to Benin, coming from Lagos, the old road? <laughs> and truly, the house was there for you to see. And so the reality is that there, there are people who want to be remembered for that. Mm. <laughs> truly, yeah, I tell you. Absolutely. Yes, I, I can think of one yeah. who may want to be remembered. No, that's why they quickly set up all right these now. foundations. And yeah. that's why I have a problem with people naming foundations after them, their <laughs> direct name. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, what is the motivation behind Correct. this? I think we've yeah. had this discussion. Yeah. Like, yes. no, I agree with you, yeah. that, that, that thing really, it, it, it offends me. Yeah. You know, when I see some, like, like, somebody, somebody's foundation. Yes, no, yes, yeah. that means that you're not, you're not doing it from, for, for the right. For no, no, you can always no, you say may, that. But you may, but you've gotten into that okay, trap yeah. of. You, you know when Shai, right. you know when Shai got by me came and yes. he said they yeah, he forced him why. to yes, name in his school for legal reasons. Even though I would say that I can't be forced like him, I will resist it. But I have to agree that he there's a chance of being forced into naming things. But I also want to just 
go echo a bit, or maybe identify what Uche said to somehow deviate a bit from it. Okay. You know, I, I don't think it's possible. I think really, if you're somebody who has a, a, a value for the afterlife, it will reflect in the way you live your life. Yeah, today. absolutely. Um, and and you can't actually divorce the two. So mm. um, so I I do agree with Seydu to say, look, we must consider where we're going. You know, you, so that we can live our lives as a reflection of what we really believe is waiting for us at the end of the road. It's like you know, a child who has to sit an exam. There's a way you prepare, there are things you forego mm -hmm. because you know that there's something more beyond, yeah, that's right, you know, yeah. so you won't go to university. There's some people I knew I met at university, they were partying hard when the exam came, they wanted to cram, of course. Whereas some of us were more responsible. <laughs> we like to think, <laughs> we, you know, we put aside the party because we said, yeah. well, we're not here to party so much as we want to get a good grade. Yeah. So that subsequently beyond yeah, university, uh, we'll be the ones having a good time. So mm -hmm. there's a way people, if they value this life as an end, then maybe that's why we're in the situation we are mm -hmm. today yeah. because they, they can't see beyond today's, today's yeah. uh, bread. Yeah. 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 But now, I, still, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the death of very big society people has mm. a way of drilling home what you're talking about. Mm. You know, in, 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 uh, a couple of weeks ago was Mugabe. Mm -hmm. yes. mm. And when you remember that that gentleman ruled with an iron fist for 37 years, mm. and then all of a sudden you, you, you see the man, he, he has become a buddy mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. and to be rid of. Mm. It's, it's something that should remind us of the inevitability of death. is the only thing that will go around. And I hope that when we think of it, it will moderate how we live our lives. I hope so too. Mm, thank yeah. you. A sober but empowering advocacy. Uche seeks to empower us in the area of our relationships with our bank after the break. You're watching The Advocates on Plus TV Africa. It's not what you're up against and how you respond to it that makes the difference. Today I'm gonna to be talking about our oppressive bank charges. At a time when there is huge unemployment and a really struggling economy, we hear that instead of Nigerian banks also feeling the pinch, they are making massive profits at our expense through oppressive bank charges. Though customers have expressed considerable concern regarding these charges, nothing seems to be done about the ridiculous charges or the abysmal service we experience each day. For those that are not aware, the current existing bank charges include ATM card maintenance charge, which attracts over 50 naira monthly from millions of customers. We also have the account maintenance fees, which vary with the volume of transactions, while SMS notification fee of about 200 naira per month and multiple token maintenance fees are charged on tens of millions of customers' accounts. As if those weren't bad enough, in January 2016, the Central Bank of Nigeria directed that banks deduct 50 naira stamp duty on every 1,000 naira and above deposit made into current accounts as an avenue to increase government revenue. We also can't forget the 60 naira, which is automatically deducted after three ATM transactions from another bank. And just this week, the CBN announced that individual cash deposits of 500,000 naira and above will attract a 2% processing fee, and corporate deposits of 3 million naira and above will attract a 3% charge. Nigerian banks still act as if they are doing us a favor keeping our money with them. The service is so shoddy, often delaying bank transfers or even debiting us twice on a single transaction. They never ever reverse their mistakes within 24 hours, even though the law says that they should. In fact, we should be lucky if we get a reversal within a week. No penalties are ever levied against them for the distress and inconvenience they regularly cause their customers. Bank managers often don't even have a clue about managing accounts. You only get to see them when they come looking for your deposit. Our banks are pretty much pointless. They just act as expensive piggy banks. They offer loans at exorbitant interest rates and you can pretty much forget about mortgages. Yeah, well I have anyway. I'm beyond sick of the way Nigerian banks treat their customers, oppressing us with unexplainable high charges accompanied with terrible service. I, for one, will be starting a petition directed at the CBN. If you are as aggrieved as I am, then feel free to sign my petition because enough is enough. 
Absolutely. <laughs> okay, woman, I've signed your hats. Excellent. I'm signing. I've signed. <laughs> Thank you. I have contempt for oh. Nigerian banks. Oh, wow. Um, yes, they are not banks. They are, they, like you said, they are, they're just piggy banks. That's it. They have no credit facilities that make sense. They cannot extend credit to those who need it. They come out talking about we're going to help the agricultural sector mm. and nothing will happen. We're going to help SMEs, they set up all sorts of things, nothing is going to happen. All they know is charges. The 500,000 charge and the 3 million Naira deposit charges, which uh, CBN has just okayed, mm. which is another joke because while you're talking about the banks, I hope we know that the CBN is one of them in, this, in, in a way. <laughs> the bank. CBN is also a joke. Mm. The whole banking system in this country is a joke. Wow. If, um, <laughs> what, what we've got, yeah, what we've got is a <laughs> yeah, we've got a whole lot of people making money on our money and mm -hmm. doing nothing for it. So when you see your bank managing director looking very suave and well dressed and, and fly whatever, on flying jets. on private jets and so on, just know that he has not done enough work to warrant what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact. Okay. And, yes, and while I might say that there are engineers who do their work as engineers properly, because I can see very tall buildings standing, I can see what mechanics do to our cars <laughs> some of the time, I can't see what a bank managing director does. I can't. Please, please. Wow, uh, wow. Wow. I almost I want Malahu like, to talk. It should have been. Can, can I? Can I, can I yeah, 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 because. But I want Malahu, if you don't mind, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm keeping brief. Yes, please. He is in the banking sector. So I yes. wanted somebody who can Good explain chair. something. Yeah. Um, I, I don't <laughs> I think it's as start. bad as Duke has <laughs> expressed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're still providing a huge service. Otherwise, in spite of all these charges, we will not go knocking their doors. It's by force. Yes, no. It's but not by force. No, it's by force. Yeah, what am I going to do with my money? That's it. You keep it under your pillow. Exactly. I, no, I can't keep it under my pillow. That's the problem. To people. So you, you do it. <laughs> Sorry, not you. The banks. <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm, you see, I'm about to attack. <laughs> we need to look at it okay. from the perspective that there is a business. Mm -hmm. One, right. because it is a business, there is a goal to make money. Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't stand on its own. It's a microcosm of the larger society. So you're not going to have a situation in which what is happening in other parts of the economy, they are shielded from it. And one of the main problems in this country today is the cost of doing business. Yeah, that's true. Yes. So where, as their own costs go up, as, as the costs go up, they need to pass it on to somebody. No problem. Otherwise, they're going to be out of business. Mm -hmm. I will pick on the, specifically on the um, deposits, uh, the charges on deposit. Mm. The way it has been reported in the newspaper over the last uh, couple of days was as if we're just having it for the first time. No, well, I'm aware that we tried it, this before. Yeah. We tried it for mm. two or three years. Mm. Right. And then at the point in time, we backed out of it. Mm -hmm. And here is the logic. In the first instance, why do you want to carry 500,000 Naira cash to go and deposit? We must be asking ourselves this. One of the problems I had in my early days when I lived in the United States was when I write check for $5, when I'm writing the words, I'll put 1000 behind it, and the check will be returned. I, you wrote $5, but in words, you put 5000 Because where I was coming from, we don't write $5 check. <laughs> okay. You know, and in those kind of environment, you can have 10 people, and you won't have somebody who can produce a $50. If somebody produces a $50 note, most likely it's a Nigerian. Mm. Yeah. So... The cash and carry financial environment that we run is inefficient. Mm -hmm. We must move away from the cash and carry. And if you don't, uh, um, because it's, it's a two-edged sword now, mm. the, the CBN is saying, come on to the platform like POS, we will lower what used to be the charges. They've lowered it a little bit now. Um, instead of 0 0.75, it's now 0 0.5 with a cap of 1,000. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, leave that cash casting. Pay with your card. Let me encourage you to come onto that platform. And by that, by, by so doing, you will lower the cost. Cost of cash processing is huge, both for the bank, even for the CBN. Can I come in so here? Yes. Yes. Very quickly. Okay, but say you say you. Let's say you say you. I have, I have, I have, I have mm -hmm. a lot, a lot. Uh, for <laughs> the banks, honestly, I believe... Um, there, there's a whole lot that the banks could do. Mm. Um, I sympathize with the bank because, one, there's um, lack of data for most people. So security is Even higher identity. for them. 
Yeah, right. In the other clients that you're talking about, you know, they have details. They have your NI number so or social security. They can, yeah, they know you can't go anywhere. Lateral. They can stop. Once you default, wherever you go, you probably can't even buy anything from a supermarket. Here is difficult. Mm -hmm. We understand that. But our banks are not creative. They, right. they want cheap money. They want mm -hmm. to get big money from banks or Dangote or somebody. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to understand. How many banks have taken time to understand dynamics of business? Thank you. To even understand that, look, this thing would, the, would, would, you know, they understand the life circle of that business. All mm -hmm. they're looking is the bottom line. That's it. Do you understand? So it's difficult. Now you're talking cashless, which is what this whole thing mm -hmm. is all about. They want to take us cashless without putting all the security... Uh, safe net for me. Why would I want to take all my money? Ca uh, what you call it, digital money when I know for POS you mentioned mm -hmm. if I use POS I don't get value until the next day. Exactly. That's lost for me. Do you understand? There's so many lapses in all of those things that the banks are not telling us. Mm -hmm. So maybe what they should advocate for is consolidating data working with government to mm -hmm. ensure that the credit system is you know is strengthened mm -hmm. so that wherever you are right if you default Biscuit, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you can't buy, would yes. get a hold of you mm -hmm. and not rip people off using cheap tactics like yeah. this, which is what, what I think. I'm in favor you of, understand? Why I'm in favor of Uche's and uh, advocacy is really that I feel that the banking sector single handedly can reform the country. Mm. You know, and, and even I, it, I think so, absolutely. because it's where, you know, money is really the, the, the language that everybody <laughs> speaks, whether they yeah. like it or not. Yeah. So the politicians have to heed that language. So yeah. if people can create a system where, because I think, not to, not to be revolutionary too much, but when the MM, MM what's that, MM1? MM. The, MM, 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 MM. MM. People, apparently, the, the conspiracy theory is that they were so troubled by it that they had to derail it, because it's almost like a system that could operate outside of the banks, Bank and yeah. the people could be empowered to do their own thing. I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but I, it made me think that if there was such a system, that could operate independent of politics, independent of governance, then the people could be empowered, you know, really, literally empowered. So if they could find a creative way to get people circulating, we're, we're business people well, but, at you, heart, see, I, you know, and if people like Mark Zuckerberg can see that, oh, there are opportunities there here, are opportunities. why can't the bank see those opportunities and cash into it? And the banks are is, seeing the opportunities. Don't forget that uh, um, if, if you look at uh, quarter two inflow, foreign direct investment or foreign inflow into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The biggest was from a bank. Was, I think it was Stambic. Okay. You know, so if there are no opportunities, nobody brings money there to, to that kind of thing. And this is a 200 million people market anyway. Mm -hmm, exactly. And it's a bride, not just in Africa, even in the yeah, world. Yeah. In spite of our challenges, every day people are seen knocking the door of, course. of, of this country to come and invest. But the banks yeah. aren't doing enough, at least you like no, no, I, 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 I agree. serving the customers. Yeah, customer there. service is not have, very good. We don't have any real benefits that we get from the banks, apart from <laughs> putting out, no, for real, yeah. as, as, as a business. Yeah. Every time we go to them saying, look, we need a facility for this, they tell us to, to practically put up our grandmothers and even when we put up our grandmothers they say no sorry no, can, 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 can I tell you something that, that is not I just want to qualify with something she said yes. they do sometimes reverse within 24 hours so they never never <laughs> reverse yes. ever. I have I have, I have. Oh, okay. they, 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 several they times sometimes immediately several times immediately, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. let's be fair yeah. 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 But, but, do you know, but, do you know but, the cost of holding that phone for one hour of course just because you're very lucky but isn't this a case of monopoly I think sometimes people are treating you like this because they feel you have no option if suddenly they had a bank that was behaving the way they ought, they will give them some. I, I, I want to make money, a comment on, on part of what you I said to, yeah. so that it doesn't go okay. like that. The, the MMM bit. Mm. The MMM bit, because there are all variants of it in the system. Yes, it yes. goes beyond empowering people. What kind of empowerment makes you invest in something? Without security. And in uh, one week or in one month, you are getting, even if the, the underlying asset is that they are using it to plant heroin. It wouldn't return that kind of return. So it's a fraud right from is, the very beginning. Is. I'm not trying to you promote know. it. Okay. Yes. So. I know. We, we <laughs> Thank you for qualifying on, that. On, you know, about this. Yeah. But here we go. We've come to the end of this advocacy for me anyway. Right. Resistance can be a potent form of advocacy. Time to key into your advocacy on our social media platforms. There's certainly a lot of love coming our way this time around. Bridget Miller Taylor says, I'm going to need you all to dial back that gorgeousness. It's getting out of hand. <laughs> Thank you, Bridget, for that. On um, what's love got to do with it, Emeka Moma says, bam, tell them truth all. I believe he was encouraging the ladies on the panel to talk sense into the men folk. Yeah. <laughs> on Chuka's topic to do with Robert Mugabe's late departure, Austin Ezefedi, I hope I've pronounced your name right, says, 
Chuka, you bring caustic humor to bear on Mugabe. Please don't forget those Mugabe sayings shared on Facebook. Here's one. An old man that doesn't meditate during conferences will have nothing to say. Mugabe 2016 at Bini City. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms. On Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Bolaha provokes us by tabling matters concerning the state of the nation after the break. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. After 59 years, how independent are we really? Only 13 states out of our 36 generate up to 20% of their own total revenue. If we stretch that a bit to determine how many states generate up to 30%, the number is just about six. Actually, up to 30 states rely on Abuja for up to 70 to 93 percent of what they spend every year. So, where does the money that they all go to Abuja every month to share come from? Essentially, it is oil money from mostly four states, taxes and custom duties driven by Lagos, and supported in bits and pieces by a handful of states. We can add up all these bits and pieces together and say an equivalent of two states. The implication of this is that the financing of 36 state plus FCT and financing the federal government as well is by wealth generated from about seven states out of 36 plus one. Thus, Nigeria is like an engine performing at 20% capacity. Is it surprising then that we have such a high level of poverty? The states are essentially in the business of allocating the goodies that comes from Abuja every month, as opposed to being wealth creators. More interestingly are some of the excuses for the current state of the state. Some say it is because of what Lugar did in 1914. Some others think it is the constitution. Other school of thought says, if only they will allow states to generate and distribute their own power, etc. Truth is, all the excuses could indeed have bearings on the capacities of the states to perform optimally, but they are poor excuses for the abysmally low level of wealth creation that is going on at the state levels today. Pause and ponder. Tiny Israel. Niger state is about 2.5 times the size of Israel. Israel has water poverty, but it makes about $1.5 billion annually exporting vegetables. That's about 460 billion naira. Think about the fact that Africa's annual food import is in excess of $50 billion. Is it the constitution or Lugard that is preventing a state with land and water from making just 50% of what Israel makes? Who says we cannot feed Africa and by so doing create wealth rather than all of us living on oil. Mm. <laughs> uh, no, let, me, let me quickly say this, so Please in case so you, can, you can tell me oh, otherwise. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just thinking that, you know, yes, I, I hear what you're saying about Israel, but, and, and I really think maybe you're a bit hasty to dismiss arguments about restructuring or you know, doing things differently to the way we're doing them now in terms of structure, because I think it all goes towards motivation. Why would I? make any effort. Because when I even looked at some of the graphics and say, oh, this state, like for example, Lagos State is, is doing very well in right. terms of production, uh, IGP, IGR. Yeah, internally IGR. And then you find states that are, are producing as little as 9% and Lagos is seven percent. Why would, why would I bother to stress my people mm. if at the end of the day, whether you produce 9 or you produce 60, we're still going to make up for your, Correct. you see. So there's no motivation to be top of the class, so mm. to speak. So, so there must no be, incentive. that's the word I'm looking for. There mm. must be incentive. There must be a system that rewards productivity in the individual states or else you're wasting your time telling people that they can. Of course they can, but why should they? Yeah. You know, it's a bit like how the benefit system works in the UK. You find a lot of the people who are 
native born because they know they can claim more in benefits that than when they, they, they go out to work. In yeah. fact, the system seemed at, the system at some point mm -hmm. seemed to be penalizing you. The minute you start working, the taxes take mm -hmm. away a lot of your hard-earned work. Whereas if you sit there, you can go on holiday, buy a plasma TV, do all the things on benefits. You know, mm -hmm. we were even encouraged at some point to tell people all the benefits available to them if they didn't work, if they claim this, that, and the other. So it was counterproductive. Why would you do that? Mm -hmm. You're sending out the wrong message. So for now, the way Nigeria is structured, it doesn't actually pay to be productive because at the end of the day, like you say, two states are feeding. Mm. <laughs> That's really unjust. You know, yeah. it doesn't work at all. And it makes me wonder, you know, if this isn't actually a deliberate, you know, I mean, to keep us action from the center. Wow. Because I think every, no, for real. I mean, I it's, just it's almost like they, they like you sort of. Uh, Coming with bowl in hand. Yeah, mm. thank you. You know, to come and ask for the handout. So that, that way, you know, it's kind of like if you don't fall in line with our okay, thinking, okay, I see. Then, then, yes. then you're not going to get so it. Because, I mean, that, that's kind of what so, was told to, um, I think, when it was uh, when we had a PDP government right. and we had an APC Lagos uh, government. Lagos, yeah, yes. it was still and and it, they didn't get anything from, control. The, from the government. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I, think I, the, I get your point. Really, the, the government should want to encourage this. So it amazes me that till today they are actually encouraging the come to the center. That's why you, you hear yeah. of um, governors who their main base is Abuja. 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 They're, they're not even in their home in their states. Their states, you know. <laughs> so I honestly think that there is um, some kind of um, the system is working. Yeah, against the system us. is actually working against what you're saying. And truly, that's why I believe there has to be restructuring. But again, I know that the system or the, the central. Doesn't, don't we, want doesn't want that. So again, w where do we go from here? We just have to keep protesting, I suppose. <laughs> you know, I, I, think, I think some places were lucky, you know. Lagos was lucky to become the federal capital, and that's why today it is what it is. Uh, other people have not been as lucky. Asaba was once our capital, whether yes, we like it or yes. not, but they killed and slaughtered the Ibus, so they ran to Lagos where there was better behavior from the locals. So Lagos is lucky. Asaba could have been Lagos today. Now, what we need to do, I think, is that we need to spread that, or is it spread the joy around? Ports in Lagos are causing trouble for Lagos now. Mm. I mean, we just don't need ports in Lagos. Mm. What no, we should, we don't. What we we should don't. do is to remove them and move them to, to the east another, and another, yeah, else, but they move them so it. that we can have ports in other places and Lagos can be relieved. Lagos is so commercially successful, it will reinvent itself without port You said it's successful. So, I was asking Bolaho before we came on here that yeah. in spite of the fact that Lagos is generating so much, okay, is it the really debt, the indebtedness, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, there's no way it's that Okay, okay true. Let said, me yeah. mind what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Right. But what yes. I'm basically saying is I Lagos, what Lagos saying, is making so much mm. yeah. and it's so vibrant that if we remove one bit of it, We'll find a way to. It can regenerate. We can regenerate. Yeah, yeah, we'll reinvent ourselves. Lagos will reinvent mm -hmm. itself and move on. We need to start doing stuff like that. Abuja is a case in point. You make a bare, a bare place the capital. What has happened? It's generated an economy. So why don't we spread it around? But Let's I, have sorry, ports in other states so we can have some business right. there and reduce the effect of Lagos. You will find that as we do things like that, as we go around the country, uh, creating what I call new big cities, mm. uh, we, we will probably be all the better. Maybe, maybe you're really saying what I wanted to say, sorry, very quickly, yeah, right. say, which is, I, I, you know, I think there should be a way of rewarding good behavior, in quotes, because I feel that if Lagos is doing the right thing, like one of the, um, the transport commissioners was saying that, look, he's number two uh, person in, in the UK, because it's such a commercial center, the transport system, the, the government would invest at least 40% yeah. of the, what is necessary to, in the infrastructure development of the UK. Yeah. And, but I hear they're all on their own, which is why maybe even they're making so much. So much is being sunk in, but you're not necessarily seeing. seeing. You know? so, so there must be a way that if you're generating, you can also get something back. Sorry, Sadie. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, they say necessity is the mother of invention. invention right? Um, there's no incentive really for mm. states to want to exactly. you know leave the status or change the the, the rock be the gray, rock the boat <laughs> as it is mm. you know and i remember ali mazuri he did mention okay. that africa is backward because we don't have all the 
the winter, all the harsh seasons. Yes, yeah, we're, that's so, like we're, we're so comfortable been, with like things here. Yeah. 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 Are we comfortable? Winter. No, it's not comfortable. No, no hazards. No, 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 it's not a disaster. What are you talking about? Cassava, stem there, and it grows. The weather is all lovely. I have to say, it's not heat. The bad roads. What makes you comfortable? Here's the thing. Winter, winter, you have to be innovative. You have to keep warm. What about heat here? Heat? Next winter, you have to you plan a if you want to say heat, no, you go to the I Middle see, East. Yeah. Then you and see it, 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 No, it. we're suffering enough. I don't think <laughs> no, we need to no, suffer no, more. No, 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 no. We're the suffering enough. About no, the suffering there is, there is no motivation. Mm. I, I absolutely agree with it. Mm. It's almost like you know how um, children from wealthy parents don't seem to be as motivated to succeed mm, as children right. who come from nothing. So I, I kind of say like, oh, if you're going to go and get a handout anyway, okay, from why, the you, yeah, why, point why, why, why are you going to bother yourself? Yeah. 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 But you see, this thing is beginning to get to really hit home with us. When you look at the federal government budget for this year, it's abysmal. Mm. As in it's excessive or horrible. What we can so it's, it's, it's all in loans now. Is That's that how we're going to generate yeah. it? We need the state to perform. Oh, well, that got us talking. Ekene wants to get us doing a certain type of talking after the break. If we did it, we may as well own up to it. Are you guilty as charged? I watched the news of Felicity Hoffman, a Hollywood actress sentenced to 14 days imprisonment, as well as a $30,000 fine and 250 hours of community service for seeking to cheat the system and give her daughter an advantage in examinations for an Ivy League college. Her confession statement was contrite. She said, I broke the law. I have admitted that and I pleaded guilty to this crime. There are no excuses or justifications for my actions, period. She apologized to her daughter and I hear she's working hard at mending her relationship with her daughter. In that moment, the scales of justice were rightly balanced. I fell into a daydream. How refreshing and even therapeutic to hear an accused person essentially say, guilty as charged. How refreshing and how rare. I woke up with a jostle. In relationships we value, surely, truth and admission of guilt must be the bedrock. I'll use myself as an example. The other day I found myself exclaiming in exasperation to my nine-year-old daughter, you're making me angry. My conscience set off an alarm. I knew it was the wrong thing to say. Later that afternoon, I was able to apologize to her and let her know that though she might provoke me to the moon and back, the choice to be angry or not was entirely my responsibility and not hers. Now, was that a smile I saw steal across my daughter's face? Order was restored. Like Felicity Hoffman, we must practice owning up to our wrong doings and take personal responsibility for them. The outcome? As parents or role models, we would be setting an example for the future generations. As citizens, our personal revolution of being man or woman enough to say guilty as charged would trigger a domino effect and eventually lead to a national transformation, a nation transformed by truth. What do you say, guys? <laughs> to transform Nigeria. By Are you visualizing it? Wow. Is it coming alive? <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you know, each time you keep uh, it into the yeah. government, you say, well, let's see what we can uh, take ownership uh, of. Absolutely. Uh, I, I heard the, the president, or the prime minister of Canada, own up to um, the brown mask. Uh, well, he had, he had no choice. He had no choice. Oh, really? And you know what? Yeah. That is, I'm sorry that you, now that you mentioned that, because yeah. I saw that. I was actually, for me, that, like just, that was of just nonsense. That's just him being, you know, thing. he has to save face because <laughs> he did it. And if he um, felt really bad about it, he might have maybe brought it to the fore ages ago and said, oh, in my old, in, when I was young, no, let's just, when I was younger, you know, I did some things. Um, but it was only when it was brought out that he now had to come out and say that he had no choice because he always comes across as a, a liberal I uh, yeah very PC so that was horrible for him for it to come out and again with this Felicity Hoffman thing mm -hmm. I, people in the public eye, when they do things like that, they want it to go away as quickly as possible. Yeah. There was enough evidence against her. She had no other choice. The quickest thing for her was to admit that she did what she did so that 
And she got off lightly because, in fact, throughout this past week, we've seen a comparison between her and a black woman who actually did something similar, but even for more noble reasons mm -hmm. than this lady. Yeah, and what did she get? Yeah. She got, was it seven years yeah, in five prison? Years, five years. Five years. Five years. Five years. Five years. It was reduced. Prison? It was reduced. Yeah. Can you just imagine that? So, as far as I'm concerned, it's not because they, you know, no, we, we should they use, they're not the example. Yeah, really. You are the example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I buy, I'm, I'm totally for apologizing for when you know you've done something wrong for me it's actually cathartic it frees me no, it you does. know and also i love the fact that my kid understands that yes even mama can be wrong mm -hmm. you know because sometimes he tells me mama you're never wrong you know everything and i'm like no i don't mm -hmm. you know i want him to understand that when people do something wrong say sorry mm -hmm. you know it, it, it doesn't take much but it, it, it makes really, you a bigger person yes exactly and it's good for you as well to know that you know you don't always have everything you it's don't always job. know everything so i love that you know, you are the example, not those two that <laughs> were. Say, I'll, I'll still come back on it, but yeah. let me uh, hear from others. Mm. What did you think of Felicity Hoffman's <laughs> apology? Well, like Uche said, she had to give it. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. she had to. She, she had, had to. to. She was cornered. Oh, um, <laughs> but I think, though, it brings out, it just tells us about things that happen, what people do to get things. That was what was more important to me because mm. I couldn't have cared less about her apology because she had to. Yes. And I'm not sure if it's genuine. Oh, wow. oh I apologize oh, to my daughter, to yeah. my relatives. <laughs> and I was wondering, why are you apologizing to a thousand people, you know? Okay. Just get on with it. You know, the whole thing started to become very melodramatic to me anyway. Wow. Oh, yes. So, um, and by the way, why can't you be angry? I, I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's, no, you see, everybody has their own yeah. guilt, guilt, you, you know? say, pendulum. Yeah, yeah. I just felt that at that point in time, you know, I didn't want my daughter taking responsibility for the way I reacted mm, to her. Right. So, you know, so now she'll be feeling bad that she's going to make me angry. Mm. Well, it's not her making me, it's me choosing yeah. to be angry. She can misbehave, yes, yeah. I'll tell her off. But yeah. whether I get angry is not something she'll be mm. burning herself. Yes, yes. she yes. should be afraid But everybody's anger. their own. Mm. What I gained from this is when you don't have an option, is when people really own up. Is, yes. is that what it is? Especially yes. for the public. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. You can look at that. A, a, some president in the West yes. who there have been litany of issues against him. Oh, but it will look I you in the face and it will tell you yeah. nothing like that happened. Yeah. And, and, and that is it. Yeah. <laughs> and it will stand Absolutely. by it. Yeah. Yes. So, but for, for him, I think he could get away with it. Mm -hmm. But for people who probably are not in a position to get away with it, then they probably just... Isn't that a little... Come to them. A little... Mm -hmm. It's just... It's just... <laughs> a, I, I'm just no, this is right. But personally, I think love Felicity people. Hoffman, some people did buy her apology as being genuine. Mm -hmm. not, not least because there was proof that she had, prior to that, she had, she had had a fallout with her daughter over it. Her yes, daughter because she her, embarrassed her daughter. Believe, no, I can't believe you didn't believe in me enough to go and be putting this kind of thing as you a fail safe. To. So she's been working on her daughter, and it meant a lot to her that she lost confidence with her daughter. So, and the judge actually bought her apology, and the judge went through all the information. I know you guys will like to think. <laughs> I actually think it's very genuine, because she, she didn't qualify it. She said, I own up, I was wrong. Ekana, this system has been going on for a long time, yeah. and it was only because it was brought to the fore. They, yes. This has been going on. It's not. This is not new. First, the Hoffman is just a one of like, why many don't we give her Hollywood. The that in the, when she was confronted with it, she admitted to it. She could have no, still no, no, because she that. shouldn't have done it in the first place. The fact that she did it, it was it was only because she was caught. I'm sorry, but that she knew that you know everybody should know that that is you know the wrong thing to do. I know, but I'm, I'm everybody to knows that. She waited until she things. was caught. She even went to court several times, still trying to argue a case until she knew. Really? That she was, yes, until she was cornered. I was, I'm sorry, she, I can't she doesn't use qualify. her. As the, <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think the content, yeah. the, uh, but I agree the with what you're context, saying. Context, right, um, for me, it doesn't matter her apology, mm. but the genuineness, genuineness to herself. Yes. 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 That, look, I've done wrong. Yeah. It's, it's the message I'll take, yeah, yeah, for her. It doesn't matter if we all believe it mm, or not. Exactly. You know, the yeah. truth is she's oh, committed that's, that's a crime that's and she's admitted. Yeah, I think you know, I, I agree with wrong. you. Yeah. And that is the message. Yeah. You know, for us to own up when we're wrong yeah. and admit that yes. No, but think about it. With the court system, most often when when you admit and you don't put go through that whole rigorous long process, 
they reduce your sentence. Yep. So there are motive, they're, they're, they're incentive, definitely incentives to admit. I mean, that's part true. of why I'm, I'm pushing that. And we, for we her have to save face, she just doesn't want to be in the media constantly doing yeah. this cash for my daughter. No, you know, if, <laughs> if I understand please, your advo please, advocacy yeah. properly, it's yeah. the message in it. Yes. Not, yes. Of course, not you what do she's understand done. My advocacy. You understand no, that understand it's it for clearly. us to own up mm, you know, yes. when, when we've done something and, and wrong. And also to encourage, because we have public figures now. Here we are in Nigeria, we're pining, we we're, we're even wanting someone to come out and say they've done something wrong. wrong. Remember the Senator Abu, before we could even get him to say anything, you oh, saw yeah. the game yeah, that he played. Oh, he said something. He said something, oh, but it was so qualified. When, 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 I, when I watched that did I, press did I make a mistake with that structural adjustment program? Was it, was it, was it repentant? I'm sorry. Yeah. Something wrong. Yes, yeah. So, you know, the, we're looking for, if, if Senator Abu could have even come out contrite, if despite all the rubbish he did, no, no I think repentance. some of us would have been... I don't know, it would have been some sort of therapy for a lot of women who were disgusted mm. by his behavior. Mm. You know, so we're looking for some public apologies at that. No, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. in a system like Nigeria where we, we would believe in Nigerian apology even more. Why? Because our system is so dysfunctional that you can't do anything to me if I don't apologize. That's true. Anyway, mm. that's true. So if somebody apologizes in Nigeria, yes. we should probably more genuine than your friends. Yeah, so you have a point. Yes, I have a point. You know, because the system it's can't it's do anything to them. Yeah. Yeah. Harry has just said sorry about something. Yes, mm -hmm. I know. The yeah. guy is sorry. I mean, I, 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 everybody go quiet. I've been waiting for some apology from him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Nothing like some soul searching, eh? Thanks for joining us on this edition. Till next week, same time, fresh topics. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible strategy. strategy. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.